There's also a, a binder um, from the Medi workshop, which has articles on all different kinds of topics, and it also has an introductory gloss, I mean, very basic <laughs> glossary, Arabic, uh, English, um, to be corrected or added to, I mean, I think it's really useful. I can leave the binder here for the week if people want to make any photocopies or anything. Actually, the Arab Village Foundation is very good about this uh, translation business. So they did a number of uh, things that are available on their website that are translated into Arabic. This is a brochure and kind of like a damage, what to do in case of damage wheel. Uh, these are things that were in English and have been translated into Arabic. So if you are flooded or you have a fire or you've got insects or breakage or whatever you have, you figure out what to do. It's just general care. And uh, as the instant incident at the um, Men we made clear, it's always it's always uh, important. The first rule of emergency, uh, of them dealing with the emergency situation, is always to plan ahead. So to make sure that you have a plan for when emergencies happen. And I think this is what the wheel is also doing. And there's some more information here from the Men program. There's an application form if anyone's interested to apply. For the next round, they're generally looking for keepers of collections, someone who's going to be responsible for a collection. They're focused on institutions, but in our case, where there's a lack of institutions, they're taking uh, individuals like uh, Claire, for example, or um, the uh, There's also um, uh, a sample contract from the Arab Image Foundation on how they collect, so what are their, what's their relationship with collectors and how they, they get um, uh, in, uh, how they get their collection to grow and, and how they develop the rights for it. A uh, number of other sheets that we have here, uh, this is something called a photograph information record and this is something that was produced by this uh, American in association for uh, conservators or whatever. Uh, anyways, it's a, it's in a way it kind of answers the, a little bit of this question of how much information are you um, tagging to each artifact. So it's a double-sided piece of paper. And this goes for contemporary or historic, so that similar, something similar like this would be uh, also valid for contemporary works where, that are collected by museums. It has the same, <coughs> similar kind of information. Some other uh, uh, information that might be interesting for people with collections. In the 2008 event that we had at CIC, the conservators were Italians, they were freelance, and they had a, their own studio. And they developed, they go, they go around worldwide uh, working on collections. They developed these sheets, uh, and also information sheets for each photograph. They're all in Italian. But we managed to um, translate them into Arabic, so they're also available into Arabic. This is all you know, open for, for copying. Uh, if you have uh, a room where you have your collection, these are some steps that you can um, consider in terms of climate control, humidity, and temperature, and environmental, like uh, dust and insects. So, um, uh, Conservation of photographs. This is, um, you know, there's a number of kind of standard uh, texts that uh, people use, all the different techniques. Um, there's also uh, in Spanish. Uh, we have a book here by a new initiative in Mexico, and this group was uh, created. After the initiation of a lot of these conservators that I met, uh, to help South America develop photo conservators, so it was an interesting model for us here, since they didn't have any photo conservators, so they set up a school that would be for the whole region, and they graduated only a select group every two years, so not to saturate the market. So anyway, this is about the new school in Mexico. And then the other books that, are, that we have here in the library are um, books about archives, basically, uh, or produced by archives. So there's the Benaki Museum in Athens and the Hellenic History.
historic society in Athens. And both of them carry images that are relevant to us here in Egypt, either because of the photographer or because of the content. Uh, and there are also good examples of documenting how, you know, what is, what's the information that's tagged to the image, production, care, you know, uh, historical information, all of that. So these are really nice examples of archives, regional archive, and how they're, they're producing their work. And then we also have a local archive, which is Ethnoskindaya Bibliotheca Alexandrina, and what not to do. This is a good example of what not to do. <laughs> so you're welcome to see that. And then we also have a little uh, game from uh, Heritage Foundation. Also, is something that they uh, get people, you know, get people interested in archiving images. So it's, it's kind of a memory game. They take a look at them. Anything else? Um. That's it. Um, there's a short bibliography, introductory bibliography to key texts uh, on photography, history of photography in Egypt. It's also on the Speak Memory, on, on the survey I did on the Speak Memory site. Um, and uh, sorry, I add anything. So Ibrahim is looking to finish his dissertation on non-paper. Uh, yeah, non-paper, so especially in the game type. It's more, uh, more, more popular. Can I ask another question then? Relating to the talk, you explained the processes, which was very interesting, but I would be interested if you could develop very briefly. Um, because the Agrotype, I think, is still for the first decade of the history of yeah. photographic exhibits, right? Uh, what kind of Agrotype do you find in Egypt? Were they all done by the Rahala and left behind whatever are they did accidentally? Or did some of the local studios? Started opening up since late 40s and early 50s for commercial purpose. Did they also do daguerreotypes and you actually found them? And what is the daguerreotype landscape in Asia? Can you say a lot more? Yeah. And not the daguerreotype, okay. but it is not. Then now we couldn't find the daguerreotype in Egypt. Exactly. Uh, we heard that there are some uh, collections uh, somewhere in Luxor and uh, uh, other places, but we couldn't uh, find it uh, in right now. So you worked on negative but you did not find much of it in Egypt. Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's a part of the research yes. to find the collection. So you're also focusing on non-paper, so yeah. ten times. So from the glass, you're finding lots of glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in glass, but in it glass, it, it is already exists. Okay. But uh, the main point is to search for the collection of the pure type because it, it photographed already, but we couldn't find it. And that's the other thing that's missing is a timeline of, in, for Egypt specifically, what processes were used when, the daguerreotypes, others, and where those are now. <laughs> uh, this might be a scholarly ignorant question, but how do you know that they exist? Uh, because uh, there are uh, literature, and there, we have photographs that I showed uh, you, uh, there are uh, there are a lot of photographers who visited uh, Egypt and uh, took uh, photographs with the geotype technique, but uh, we couldn't find those collections, even uh, abroad. Abroad there are some work uh, belong to Egypt, but uh, most of work is here. Yeah. Yeah. في بعض منها كانت تذكر أخبار بس مينلي عن طريق الصور وفي بعض منها كان أنا أصلاً بدأ التصنيف يعني في بداية القرن العشرين في مصر بدأ بشكل قوي أو يعني أو ما بدأش بشكل تدريجي بعد بدأ بشكل قوي بدأ يبقى في مصورين كبار ويبدو دروس بدأت الدوريات تصدر وفيها دروس للمصورين ازاي تقدر تاخد صور بتكنيك معين ازاي تقدر تجرب الكاميرا دي انواع النيجاتيفز وهكذا دي كانت الموضوعات بتاعتي وكان في القراء بيبعتوا اسئله وبعدين يتم رد عليهم بس هي المشكله بتاعتها برضو ان هي زي الصور كده نادره جدا يعني الكتاب اللي انا عرضته في عرض 
اصدامين من مجله من المجلات دي وهو ذاكر ان المجلات دي كان صعب الحصول على الاعداد اللي هو فيش غير فقط. One of them is called Surah Mudaharrika, 1911-1912. It lasted for about a year, two years. Dad put it as one issue of that magazine that I managed to okay and I had it for a The rest is lost. And then there are some other local magazines, Kantitanta uh, or Fidinet, or Tidamandu. Tidanta. That was also another, it was specialized. These were specialized for photographers for Kuwait. So these are extremely, almost unfinable. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, but I think the book that um, Ibrahim showed is a great resource. Yeah. Which is also a time book. <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah. It was published by Adam and it disappeared from the suit. Oh, I Yeah. And I like it because I don't have books. And I could buy the idea of the book. Well, I have a JPEG. 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 You know, maybe just to, just to close the evening to the things that are in the pipeline, just to let people know that we're working on this uh, timeline of photographic practice. Uh, all of the photographers that came to Egypt, uh, locals and foreign uh, studios that opened up and kind of understand the patterns, you know, and when there were big pushes, when there was big openings of studios and, and this kind of thing, and then track the processes track the collections, do a survey of collections, um, looking at uh, the studios, the history of the studios, and mapping them, for example, downtown. So there's things that are in process at the moment, you know, collectively among a number of, of players. So we'll continue working. Even as a museum proposal, you know, it's been uh, squashed slightly at the moment. So, well, thank you for coming. It's been an interesting evening. Uh, thanks. Uh, before you go, sorry, there's one last thing I forgot to say. Uh, as, a, as a digital resource here at CIC, we have videos of workshops and lectures that we've done by conservators, as well as uh,